I sincerely welcome everybody, wherever you may be, to our 2023 Kartik Yatra. in Sri Jagannath Puri. I am sincerely grateful to each and every one of you for giving your precious time and taking so much endeavor to be here. His divine grace, <clears throat> A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. He inspired perhaps millions of people all over the entire world to worship. Lord Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra. In almost every major city in the planet, he brought Lord Jagannath's chariot for the Yatras. And with the chariot of his compassion, he has pulled all of us to be here today. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he made Jagannath Puri his home Jagannath has his plan. <laughs> we have ours. And actual happiness can only come when we surrender to Krishna's plan. It is our dharma, our duty, to make every possible plan to serve the best way we can, individually and collectively. But the plan that is inclusive of all other plans for a devotee of the Lord is Sharanagati, to surrender to God's plan. Yes, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived in Puri. For 24 years. The first six years he traveled to South India, sometimes to Brindaban. But Sri Jagannath Puri Dham was his base. And for the closing eight, 18 years, he remained here in Jagannath Puri. And for 12 years, he manifested his innermost pastimes, revealing the depth of the internal purpose of his descending to this world. During the beginning part of those years, 
he invited his devotees at that time from all over the world, especially from Bengal, to have a wonderful reunion in Jagannath Puri. It is sometimes called upon as Vipralamba Kshetra, the abode where the extent of ecstatic love of God in separation has been revealed. But also, it was the capital of our parampara for some vogue, for union. The devotees would come and then he would send them away. In India, there have been four dams especially established in the north, south, east, and west. In north, it is Bajrinath Dam. In south, Rameshwaram Dam. In the west, Dwarkadam, East Jagannath Puri Dam. In the Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat, Srila Brindavan Das Thakur gives us a very confidential description of Jagannath Puri as it was spoken by Lord Krishna himself to his great devotee, Lord Shiva. Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu. Lord Shiva is greatest among Vaishnavas. The contents of the story, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, is when Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Bhuvaneshwar. And there he tells how long ago, 5,000 years ago during Krishna's incarnation, there was a great battle between Krishna and Shiva. Now, how is it that the greatest devotee would fight with Krishna? Why? It is also said, it is offensive to try to judge the mind of a great devotee. And this especially pertains to this story. It's Krishna's arrangement. Why did Krishna put Bhishma on the other side in the battle of Kurukshetra? But in the context of this wonderful story, Lord Shiva took shelter of Krishna. He prayed that this external energy, Maya, is so very powerful. It's all powerful. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna declares, Mayat Yakshena Prakriti Suyate Satcharam. Maya is my own energy, working under my control. 
Krishna's internal energy is yoga maya and external energy is maha maya. And Srila Prabhupada, he describes the differences in various ways. In one place, he said, electricity is one energy. When it is put in one receptacle, it creates heat. When it is put in another receptacle, it creates cold. So for Krishna's energy, for those who are taking shelter of him, is that energy, the internal energy, awakens their eternal souls and engages them in ecstatic loving service. And for those who by their free will choose to live, to act, to speak, independent of the service of the Lord, then they come under the supreme control of the external energy. This maya energy is very difficult to overcome. In fact, the only possibility is when we take shelter of Krishna, who is the controller of all controllers. So as pastime, Lord Shiva is coming to Krishna that this external energy is so powerful. It is so bewildering. I fought against you like an enemy. How is that possible? Please give me shelter. I want to always be in your association. Give me a place where I could always be with you. Herein, as a preacher, Lord Shiva is giving us emphasis on the very foundational principle for all the various processes of devotional service. And that is satsang, association of devotees. Govinda das pray durlabha manava jana masatsange taraha e bhavasindha. This human life is very rare, but the rarest thing in this human birth is to have the association of sincere devotees. Tatra tishtami narada yatra gayanti mad bhakta. Krishna tells where my devotees are coming together sincerely to put me in the center by hearing and chanting my names and glories. That is where I reside. If we could only grasp that truth. Sometimes we want to go so many places we want to go back to Godhead. <laughs> but actually, we cannot really go back to Godhead until we realize that when we really take pleasure in the association of devotees rendering service and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, That is where Krishna will be. That is the, the means by which we can understand what it actually is to go back home, back to God.
So we come on these yatras for this purpose, simply to associate with sincere devotees who are eagerly seeking the shelter of Krishna through his holy names, through hearing his transcendental glories, and through rendering service in the association of devotees. Those who love the Lord and who are earnestly striving to love the Lord. Lord Shiva's praying, give me a place to be close to you. And Krishna tells, that I will give you the most holy place to reside. My own personal abode. It is named my own name, Purushottam Kshetra. just near the Northern Ocean. Under a banyan tree on a beautiful blue mountain, Nila Chala, is my eternal home. as Jagannath. When all the universes in Brahma's creation are destroyed, Purushottam Kshetra, Jagannath Puri, remains as it is. In that place, I especially eternally enjoy eating opulent prasad. <laughs> this is Krishna's message to Lord Shiva. It is 10 kroshas, 80 miles in length, and the demigods, when they look down to Jagannath Puri, they see every living being, all the castes of humanity, the animals, cows, buffaloes, goats, dogs, donkeys, all the different varieties of birds, every insect, all living entities, the demigods see the residents of Puri having the four-armed forms of the residents of Vaikuntha. Anyone who sleeps in Jagannath Puri obtains the same benefits as one who achieves samadhi in meditation. That's, that's Krishna's that, that is Lord Jagannath's version of wishing us good night. <laughs> Anyone who lays down obtains the benefits 
of offering their full prostrated obeisances in a holy place. Anyone who walks gets the benefits of circumambulating all the holy places. And anyone who talks gets the benefit of offering prayers to the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> Krishna tells that Yamaraj has no jurisdiction in my abode of Jagannath Puri. Lord Jagannath himself, he takes the full responsibility of giving reactions to pious or impious activities and is especially inclined to give himself to his sincere devotees. Krishna then gave Lord Shiva an eternal home in Ikamravan. Just north of Puri. And he said, it will be famous by your name, Bhuvaneshwar. Chakanath Puri is praised in many of the great Puranas written by Srila Veda Vyas. And there are innumerable stories and narrations of pastimes by great acharyas of all of the various sampradayas. One of the names the Puranas give this place is Sri Kshetra which is so profoundly significant. Shri is the pleasure potency, the internal energy of the Supreme Lord. In Barsana, Srimati Radharani's home, where the house of Brishabhanu Kirtida Sridhama, Ananga Manjari, and Srimati Radharani are forever living. The Brijabhasis call that, that mountain Sriji Mandir, the temple of Sri Radha. One of the great names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Srinivas or Srivas. Because Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is always upon his heart. It is through Sri, through the, film, the, the feminine energy of the absolute truth, that mercy and compassion is especially bestowed upon the conditioned souls. Sri Kshetra, because Jagannath Puri is permeated with the blessings, the mercy and the grace of Srimati Radharani.
coming here, truly we are following in the footsteps of great acharyas. Ramanuja Acharya. Actually, Srila Prabhupada tells story in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He was a great worshiper of Jagannath. But he saw certain ways that the worship was being conducted. He wanted to standardize according, you know, to the principles he had established. And Lord Jagannath responded when he was just about to establish these standards here in Puri. He took rest at night and woke up hundreds of miles away in Kurmakshetra. Even in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, the closing chapter, there is a wonderful narration regarding Pundarik Vidyanidhi, where he was seeing certain ways the worship was going on that just wasn't according to his analysis. And he spoke some of these things to Swarup Damodar Goswami. And that night, Jagannath came and beat him, slapping him in the faces in a dream. And Balaram did the same. And Pundarik Vidyanidhi was saying, please save me, save me. Why are you beating me? And they were slapping and slapping. Why are you criticizing my devotees? He said, I would. He begged forgiveness. Jagannath said, don't do it again. This is the dream. And when he woke up in the morning, his whole face was swollen. When Swarup Dhammadar Goswami and other devotees came to see him, he was hiding his face. But they understood why. So we have come here to Jagannath Puri on this wonderful, special pilgrimage. And Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, Yegata mam prabhagyante tams tatai That as we approach the Krishna, Krishna reciprocates. Krishna is none different than his holy names. As the service attitude in which we approach the holy names is how Krishna is going to reciprocate with our chanting. Sankirtan, which is kirtan, bhajan, japa. This is Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. It is the prime benediction for all humanity. Nam Nama Kari Bahun Nija Sarvashaktis. It was here in Jagannath Puri that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu composed Shikshastakam the eight verses that instruct what is the mood in which we should chant the holy names of the Lord. The tattva and the spirit of the sadhaka in chanting. From the most beginning stages when we sincerely chant Krishna's name, it purifies our hearts. 
and awakens ananda, the happiness that we're all seeking. He declares that Krishna has many names, and in each of these names is invested with his own presence. His divine potencies. If only we could realize when we speak or sing the name Hare, Radha, we are in the presence of Srimati Radharani. When we speak the name Krishna, Rama, we are in the presence of the Supreme Personality of God. Those who are devotees of Ram, when they chant the Hare Krishna mantra, sincerely seeking shelter, they are in the presence of Sita Ram. For the devotees of Lakshmi Narayan, they are in the presence of the Lord that they worship. And for those in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the incarnation of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath in transcendental sound vibration. Trinata Pisuni Chena Tador Iba Se Krishna. Amani namane de na kirtaniya sadhari. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells that we can always chant the holy names of the Lord when we are earnestly seeking to be humble, tolerant, forgiving. When we do not demand or expect respect for ourselves as devotees, then to that degree it becomes natural that we find joy in offering respect to others. Such a open secret. We have heard it. In fact, it's at the core of all the great spiritual paths of the world. But still, the mind, influenced by the ego, makes it so difficult to actually understand. The joy of feeling self-importance and being recognized as others is important, is insignificant in comparison to the joy of when the pure heart honors and respects the presence of God in other people's hearts. So yes, when we come on pilgrimage, Krishna will reciprocate according to we, how we are actually taking shelter of his holy names. When we're earnestly taking shelter of the deity of Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, or any of the other merciful forms of the Lord, Krishna reciprocates accordingly. Srila Prabhupada would sometimes say, if you approach God, the deity is wood or stone, that is what the deity will show you, wood or stone. If you approach the deity, 
as the ultimate object and goal of your life, then Krishna will reveal himself as he is. And the Dham, this great place of pilgrimage, when we take shelter, when we're sincerely praying to truly be grateful to be here, and we express our gratitude through how we treat each other and through how we utilize every precious moment that we have here. This is a very inseparable part of expressing gratitude, is recognizing the value of each moment. When we take things for granted, we're not really great, grateful. Little, up, little to most of us know that it has probably taken our souls millions and millions and millions of births and deaths to have had the opportunity to come to the 2023 Jagannath Puri Kartik. Yeah. <laughs> and when we recognize that, then we're so very receptive to Lord Jagannath's mercy. Because if it has taken millions and millions of births and all the sufferings that come with every birth, and we're only here for seven days, how precious is every moment of every minute, of every hour of each day? We come on pilgrimage to worship the Lord in the association of devotees in a way that we infuse our hearts and our entire consciousness with those blessings. And then we take those blessings wherever we may go. So many of the great acharyas have established holy places in such a way that they can become pilgrimages where people could come, not just to reside, but to associate with devotees, feel the presence of the holiness of the Lord's presence and transform their lives. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent um, the, six, the Goswamis, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, to Sri Vrindavan, He wanted them to excavate the place, to make it a holy place that people from, from all directions will come to learn about Krishna, to feel the presence of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of all places in the entire universe he would invite all his devotees on pilgrimage to Jagannath Puri. 
and they would stay for four months. And then he would send them to perform their particular duties wherever their homes may be. So let us have very eager and grateful hearts for this opportunity to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, to offer prayers and offer service. Sri Jagannath Puri Town, eternal residence of Sri Jagannath. The scriptures tell that whatever pastimes the Supreme Lord performs in Goloka, Mathura, and Dwarka, he enacts all those same pastimes in Sri Purushottam Chaitra Jagannath Puri. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu resided here for 18 continuous years, most of the devotees would come from various parts of Bengal, Shantipur, Navadweep, Kulina Ground, Shrikanda, Katwa, various parts of Orissa, Bangladesh today, what is called. But some of his very, very intimate, confidential devotees, when they came here, they stayed for the rest of their lives. Swarup Damodar Goswami, who was Lalita Saki in Sri Radha Gopinath's pastimes. He was a resident of Navadweep. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Puri, Swarup Damodar Goswami came to spend the rest of his life here. Srila Ramananda Rai, who was Vishaka Saki, came to assist Lord Chaitanya's pastimes in the most confidential ways for the rest of his days in Jagannath Puri. Govinda, Kashishwar Pandit, great disciples of Madhavendra Puri. They could have gone anywhere, but they chose to spend their lives in Puri. The great Paramananda Puri, who was a godbrother of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's guru, he is Uddhava in Krishna's Leela. Krishna speaks in the 11th canto to Uddhava, you are most dear to me. You are more dear to me than Brahma, than Shiva. You are more dear to me than Lakshmi. You are very more dear to me than, than my own self is dear to me. Paramananda Puri, understanding Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was making his residence here in Purushottam Kshetra, he came to spend the rest of his life here. And the Namacharya, Srila Haridas Thakur,
He was living in Fuliagram near Shantipur. Before Lord Chaitanya took birth. In fact, seeing the situation of how Kali Yuga was bewildering humanity and this whole planet, and seeing into the future of what was to come, Sri Adwaita Acharya and Srila Haridas Thakur were performing puja and constantly chanting the holy names of the Lord to bring Krishna down to this earth to show compassion and deliver all of us. And what did they pray for? They didn't pray to the Lord to give us liberation from sufferings or entrance into Brahman. They didn't pray to the Lord even to give us elevation to Vaikuntha. Haridas Thakur was constantly chanting 300,000 names of Krishna and Sri Radha in a simple cave on the bank of the river Ganges for Krishna to come to open the doors to the Goloka Vrindavan for us. The highest realm of the spiritual world. This was the passion of his heart as Srila Haridas Thakur was chanting the holy names. Haridas Thakur spent 24 years in Navadweep during Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. And the next 24 years, practically, he remained for the rest of his life here in Jagannath Puri. Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatan Goswami and Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. The maximum amount of time that they personally spent in the association and the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Jagannath Puri. And actually they never wanted to leave. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered them go to Vrindavan and establish that as a holy place of pilgrimage. Our beloved Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, he understood this principle so deeply. He lived at the Bhajan Kutir in Samadhi of Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami. And he has brought people from all over India. What to speak of the world? I speak, I see among actually 90% of you, I can't even see. But I, from a drop, you can understand the ocean. <laughs> so many of you are from India. And even if you're living in various parts of the world, you're from India. <laughs> How many of you would be here today with the faith and the aspiration for pure unalloyed devotional service, if not for Srila Prabhupada traveling around the world 12 times to give Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy.
Yes, the Goswamis, they each lived here in Puri for about 10 months. It was here at Siddhabakula that the great acharyas who were among Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordained Sri Rupa Goswami as the acharya of our sampradaya. and was sent to Vrindavan. Our Sambandha Acharya, Abhideya Acharya, and Prayojan Acharya, Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. They had the most association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was not only revealing his own inner bhav or ecstatic love, but he was also teaching us by his example how to see while we're here. When he looked at the ocean, he saw Yamuna. Yamuna's the expansion of Vishaka, who is the expansion of Srimati Radharani, the river that flows eternally in Goloka Vrindavan and has descended in this world to participate in the pastimes of Radha Krishna, Krishna Balaram. When he saw Jagannath Balabha Gardens, he saw the forest of Vrindavan. And when he saw Chatak Parvat, a wonderful sand dune that you will all visit, he was seeing Govardhan Hill. And not only was he seen, but he was actually identifying the real nature of these places. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he has written that where there's the greatest need there's the greatest opportunity to serve. And as we make advancement in Krishna consciousness, the value of anything is in how we can serve Krishna and please Krishna. The whole process of bhakti is to transform our pursuit of pleasure from satisfying our own ego to satisfying Krishna. Some Siddhartha Hari Toshi. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has descended from the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan. And he is praying that the greatest place I could serve Srimati Radharani is in Kurukshetra, because that's where she is in the greatest need. After so long years of Irahabhav, separation from Krishna, she had the opportunity to meet him again during the solar eclipse in Kurukshetra. And after so long, she was in the presence of Krishna. 
However, he was surrounded by his queens who were all goddesses of fortune, who had royal opulences. There were soldiers, elephants. Krishna was wearing the royal garb of a prince. She's a simple cowherd girl who knew that Krishna's real happiness was being a cowherd boy with a peacock feather. In Kurukshetra, he wasn't holding a flute. How could he be happy here? In desperation, in the heart of heart, she was crying for Krishna to return to Vrindavan. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted to be there. And knowing that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna, with the Mahabhav of Sri Radha, he especially made his home Jagannath Puri. Because here, during the Ratayatra, and often when he visited the Jagannath temple, he was in this mood of Srimati Radharani when she met with Krishna in Kudukshetra. Or when she met with Uddhava, who was coming as the messenger of Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he lived in Puri for many years. In fact, by the will of Lord Jagannath, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was given the prim was given the seva of being the superintendent of Jagannath's temple. And it was during that time that he prayed to Lord Jagannath. He prayed to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to send a ray of Vishnu, an eternal personal associate of the Lord, to descend to this world to help spread Lord Chaitanya's message. the whole world. And here in Puri, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prayer was fulfilled. And you will all visit on the Grand Road, the birthplace of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhu. And during Ratha Yatra, when the chariot stopped in front of Thakur Bhaktivinoda's house, because he was the superintendent and a chief um, judge in the courtrooms, Bhagavati Devi, the little baby, whose name was Bimala Prasad, she brought the little child upon Jagannath's chariot. And she put little Bimala Prasad's head at Jagannath's lotus feet during Ratha Yatra. And at that moment, spontaneously, a garland, a mala, dropped from Jagannath's body and encircled the little baby, Bhimala Prasad. You know, in Bhaktivinoda Thakur, a 
upon hearing this wonderful pastime, he knew for sure, Jagannath has fulfilled my prayer. And our own beloved founder, Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, his whole life, he worshiped Jagannath Puri. He said when he was a little boy, he would sometimes study the railway timetables to see what time the trains were going to Jagannath Puri. Dreaming of coming here. And when he was just a little child, near the Radha temple, which were the family deities for generations of Srila Prabhupada's families. He would perform Ratha Yatra, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, reenacting the wonderful pastime in Puri. And when he was a boy, Charanaravinda, the initiated disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, and living in Mumbai for several years, Srila Prabhupada was serving his guru in Bombay. In fact, Srila Prabhupada with a couple of his dear, dear god brothers established the first temple or Godiamath of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in Mumbai. And they invited Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada to install the deities there. In 1935, from Bombay, Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, who was residing at the Chattak Parvatan Puri. Just recently, I was listening to a recording where Srila Prabhupada said, he wrote in this letter to his Guru Maharaj that you have so many disciples who are brahmacharis, sannyasis, giving their whole lives to serving you. I have a family with responsibilities. How could I best serve you? And from Jagannath Puri, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gave Srila Prabhupada the final instruction. which was actually identical to the first instruction. You are intelligent man. Take the message of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the English language to the whole world. In this way, everyone will benefit and you will benefit. And Srila Prabhupada spoke that his Guru Maharaj gave him that instruction just two weeks before his Guru Maharaj departed from this material world for Goloka Vrindavan. And Srila Prabhupada From 1967, he had deities of Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra being carved by his devotees. He said, Radha Krishna deity is a very high standard, but Jagannath, Balaram, Subhadra are very merciful. And he opened the doors for devotees to perform that service.
the mood of coming to Jagannath Puri, I would like to offer a few words. Rupa Goswami, he prayed to Lord Chaitanya. Namo Mahapadanyaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaudit Vishayama. You are Krishna. You've come with the beautiful golden complexion and the Mahabhav of Sri Radha. Although you are Krishna himself, you are more magnanimous in giving mercy than even Krishna. The most magnanimous of all incarnations. The Srimad Bhagavatam, the Puranas, the various scriptures of the world describe many, many various incarnations of the Lord. Paditranaya sadhu nam vinashaya chutuskritam. Yada yada hi dharmasya gdanya bhavati bhagata. Krishna describes he comes again and again and again to show mercy to the fallen souls. In every age, but in all the infinity and the eternity of existence, the most magnanimous and merciful of all incarnations is Lord Chaitanya. Why? Because he's giving something that no other incarnation has given so freely. The essence, the perfection, and the goal of every true religion is to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. Pure, unmotivated, uninterrupted love of God, Savai Pung Samparo Dharma, is the very perfection of Dharma. But Lord Chaitanya is giving something way beyond pure love of God. Love of God in the eternal pastimes of the intimacy of the residence of Brindaban where the conception that God is God becomes an impediment to the intimacy. And Krishna reveals himself beyond that. Because in that love in Vrindavan, Krishna experiences the highest pleasure and in reciprocation gives all of his devotees the highest pleasure. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the role of a devotee to teach us. Let us explore how Lord Chaitanya came to Jagannath Puri. In these pastimes, there's a great lesson Because so many impediments and obstacles and difficulties came in the way. But his eagerness to be seen by Jagannath and to see Jagannath and his constantly taking shelter was the example that he gave us. Srila Prabhupada, he writes in Krishna book that if we want to actually enter Brindaban, we learn how Akrura came to Brindaban. And Srila Prabhupada said, you cannot enter Brindaban just by getting a railway ticket. 
which means in these days, or an airline ticket. However all of you came, Akrura came on a chariot. Tapuri Lord Chaitanya walked. It really doesn't make any difference. You can take a plane or a train or a car or a bus or you could walk or you could talk, whatever. Even if you're in some foreign land watching this, this narration by Zoom, <laughs> you can't come to Puri just by, oh, what are they called, getting live streams. <laughs> just by an internet connection. Akrura's example it was a miserable situation he was ordered by Kamsa the worst enemy of Krishna he was ordered by Kamsa to go to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura so that Kamsa could have them killed. That was his mission. Now, Akrura was a very intelligent person. He knew if I take Krishna and Balaram away from Vrindavan, how he's going to get cursed by the Gopas and the Gopis and Nanda and Yashoda and all these people. So there were obstacles. So when he was coming to Vrindavan, he was sincerely, with all humility, eagerly excited to be with Krishna and Balaram and to take shelter of them, despite all obstacles and misconceptions that would be around it. and his beautiful prayers. At every moment, he was becoming more and more eager for Krishna. This lolyam, this eagerness. When we hear about Krishna, when we chant the holy names of Krishna, when we're associating with devotees of Krishna, we are meant to be nourishing our eagerness to be in the presence of Krishna, to please Krishna. And actually, it was the separation that Akrura, actually, Akrura never even saw Krishna before he came to Vrindavan. But he loved Krishna <laughs> just by hearing about him. And he was in so much separation from Krishna. And when Kamsa sent him to Vrindavan, this is my, this is the only opportunity I'll ever have to be with Krishna. Such eagerness. And when he arrived in Vrindavan and he saw in the dust the lotus footprints of Krishna and Balaram, he fell off of his chariot and rolled in that dust and cried tears of love. Just to touch the dust of the feet of the Lord and the ground was the ultimate treasure of his life. And it only ignited the fire of his coming closer to be with Krishna. Srila Prabhupada and our acharyas explain, this is the way we're supposed to actually be cultivating our consciousness when we're coming to Vrindavan. Then we can actually experience Vrindavan. To the degree we have that intensity of desire and surrender, that's how much we're not just physically in a location, but our hearts are open to receive the blessings of a holy dham.
let us explore how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first came to Jagannath Puri. He's living in Navadweep. And devotees from so many different places all assembled in Navadweep just to be with Gauranga Mahaprabhu, to assist him and to share with him the supreme treasure of all gifts that he came to bring us, Hadinam Sankirtan, especially Prem Sankirtan. In Navadweep and Lord Chaitanya and his devotees first began their kirtans, it was at the house of Srivas or sometimes Chandrasekhar Bhavan. And he began only welcoming those pure devotees, eternal associates of the Lord, the Panchatattva, Thakur Haridas, Marari Gupta, Pundari Vidyaniri, Sukhalambar, Brahmachari, Vakreshwar, Pandit, these devotees were eternal associates, loving devotees. And it is described the kirtans at Srivasanga were none different than the Rasa Leela of Brindaban. In the intensity and the sweetness of the loving exchanges between the devotees and themselves and the devotees and the Lord. And after some time, Lord Chaitanya brought this Sankirtan into the streets of Navadweep and invited everybody to join his Sankirtan movement. It was like an inundation of the greatest monsoon rain of Krishna's mercy upon this world that took place in Navadweep. But one day, Lord Chaitanya approached Lord Nityananda Prabhu. He said, I have come to give the sick people of this world the me medicine of Pipalikanda, which is meant to clear congestion. But what I find is the medicine is having an opposite effect. It is increasing the congestion. Now, what does that mean? Nityananda Prabhu understood exactly what it meant. He was stunned. Lord Chaitanya said, in order to reach the people who are now rejecting what I am giving, I am going to take sannyas. I will shave my head, I will leave my home, I will leave my family, I will leave everything, and I will go to be a beggar door to door. And when I beg at their doors as a sannyasi, then they will bow down and accept the gift that I am giving. When Nityananda Prabhu heard that Lord Chaitanya was going to take sannyas, the first thing that came to his mind Mother Sachi, she cannot live without you. She's a widow. 
Her eldest son took sannyasa and was never seen again. He was stunned. Lord Chaitanya, he said to Nityananda Prabhu, you know why I, I have incarnated in this world. I cannot, I cannot do this without your blessings. Give me your blessings. <laughs> Nityananda Prabhu, whatever you do, my Lord, I, I, I'm your servant. And Lord Chaitanya happily embraced him, and Nityananda Prabhu said, please discuss this with other devotees. And when Lord Chaitanya happily went away, thinking of the miseries of Mother Sachi Devi, Nityananda Prabhu, he went to a secluded place and incessantly cried. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then gave this news to Mukunda Datta and Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit said, my Lord, I, why? The first thing you will accomplish by taking sannyas is killing your mother. What type of religious principle is this? Why? You're here in Navadweep. We're having kirtan. Millions of people are joining our movement. Why do you need to take sannyas? What will you do to the heart of Sachi? How will she live? Lord Chaitanya got Gadadhar's blessings in his own ways. <laughs> and it is described, when the time came, on Makara Sankranti, Lord Chaitanya without any invitation, he attracted all of his devotees to come to his home that day, all day and all night. His devotees were coming to give gifts and to have sankirtan. And to each devotee, he was giving an instruction. And little did they know it was going to be the final instruction before he left Navadri. He said the same thing to everyone, more or less. Chant the names of Krishna. Speak about Krishna. Hear about Krishna. Worship Krishna. Always remember Krishna. Krishna is your life and soul. Whether you are alone or whether you come together with others, chant the holy names. to their respective places. Devotees were coming and going, coming and going. And when it's becoming late at night, when everyone was gone, the simplest among the devotees came. Sridhar Kolavecha. Nobody knew that Lord Chaitanya was going to leave that night. They were just being attracted to spend this time with the Lord. Sridhar came with a simple pumpkin that grew wild from his thatched straw roof. He had a one-roomed straw hut. And just wild like a weed, pumpkins would sometimes grow from the straw of his rooftop. 
and with great love and devotion. This, to cultivate your Sridhar, this was a treasure. A pumpkin grew on his roof. He would give Lord Chaitanya bananas. That's how he made his living, selling bananas. If there were no bananas, banana roots or banana bark or banana leaves. What a great opulence. A pumpkin grew on his roof. What did he want to do with that pumpkin? You know, for, for a banana seller, pumpkins are worth a lot. He wanted to offer it with love and devotion to Goranga Mahaprabhu. So he came that night and offered this pumpkin. And it was late. Lord Goranga was thinking, I'm going to be leaving in a few hours. How could I leave Navadweep without eating Kolaveja Sridhar's pumpkin? It's being offered with such love and devotion. This is the nature of the love between Krishna and the devotees. And in this case, Gauranga Mahaprabhu and his devotee. Lord Chaitanya felt indebted to Kolaveja Sridhar. He was indebted to eat that pumpkin. It would have been not offensive, it would have been beyond his ability to contain his heart from being broken if he did not accept that loving offering. But it's middle of the night and he's about to leave. And usually you don't eat pumpkins raw. So he was just thinking of reciprocating with Kalavetra Sridhar's. He just came in and brought the pumpkin and left, <laughs> offered his pronouns. He never expected anything from Lord Chaitanya. And at that moment, Lord Chaitanya was wanting to, to reciprocate through the love in that pumpkin. And somebody came to the door out of nowhere with some milk. And Lord Chaitanya told, asked Sachimata, please prepare the pumpkin. And she made kheer with pumpkin. And she offered it to the Lord. And in Christianity, we've heard of the Last Supper. Well, this was like the last, <laughs> the last prasad Lord Chaitanya had before his social death of taking sannyas. He honored Kalavetra Sridhar's pumpkin. And in the middle, at, at the very end of the night, he left his room. And Satyamata knew he was going to leave. She could feel it by her motherly intuition. Gadadhar Pandit Haridas Thakur were with the Lord, according to Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. And the Lord just left. They were resting. And Satyamata was standing at the doorway. And so tenderly, Lord Chaitanya touched his own heart and her heart. And he said, I will always be with you. I will never be away from you. You have given me my life from the time I was born. Whatever happiness I have ever achieved, it is because of you. He 
he expressed such deep, profound love and gratitude to his mother. She just stood there crying, incessant crying. She couldn't say a word. She couldn't even move. Lord Chaitanya then embraced her. And he touched, he put his, he touched her, the dust of her feet and placed it upon his head. He circumambulated her. And then he left home forever. He crossed Ganga, went to Katwa, and he approached Keshav Bharati Maharaj. And he said, I have come to learn from you how to engage in Krishna's service. Please offer me Krishna's service. For Lord Chaitanya Sanyas was only for one reason. Krishna's service. And what is the greatest service one can do for Krishna? To offer one's body, one's mind, one's words, one's life for Krishna's pleasure. And in Lord Chaitanya's case, to show compassion to the people of this world through spreading the Sankirtan of love for Krishna. Keshav Bharati Maharaj, after the hair cutting ceremony and everything, Keshav Bharati Maharaj was thinking, you are the supreme personality of Godhead, the absolute truth, the guru of all gurus, and you're asking me to be your spiritual master. If that's the way you want me to serve you, then I will be your spiritual master. After the hair cutting ceremony, and it was time to give Lord Chaitanya a sannyas name, Keshav Bharati Maharaj was thinking, traditionally, he should be Bharati. But how could I name the Supreme Lord after me? What name can I give him? Who am I to give a name to the person whose holy names is being chanted of in the spiritual world forever? But he has come to give consciousness of Krishna to the whole world. So I will give you the name Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya, he said, I had a dream last night where this saintly person came and whispered a sannyas mantra into my ear. Can I share with you this mantra and you can tell me if you think it's good? Keshav Bharati Mara said yes. So Lord Chaitanya, I'm not going to say the mantra. <laughs> but he said mantra. And Keshav Bharati Maharaj, when he heard this, he said, this is the best of all mantras. And then Keshav Bharati Maharaj, repeated the same mantra in Lord Chaitanya's ear, and he was initiated. <laughs> and he gave him a danda and saffron cloth, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu now with shaved head, wearing saffron, holding his danda. He began to chant and dance. That was his purpose, to spread the Sankirtan movement with no impediments. He could go anywhere, anytime. He began to dance, Mukunda Dat was singing. 
and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the very elderly, grave, Sanyasi Guru Keshav Bharati Maharaj, Lord Chaitanya induced him to dance. And together, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Keshav Bharati Maharaj, both holding their dandas, were dancing and dancing and dancing. This was mesmerizing for everyone who was there. They were both crying in love for Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Kesha Bharati Maharaj and actually gave him ecstatic love for Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya said, I am going to Brindaban. And Kesha Bharati Maharaj said, I am going with you. And they started going to be with Krishna. And after some time, Lord Chaitanya, everyone of Katwa was coming with him. He sent Kesha Bharati Maharaj and everyone else back. And he was so eager, so enthusiastic in separation from Krishna. going to worship Krishna. This idea of vipralamba or viraha bhava, cultivating the mood of separation, intensifies our eagerness and also if it is done with the proper consciousness, it completely humbles us. I am without Krishna. I'm completely dependent upon Krishna, yearning for Krishna. In this way, Lord Chaitanya was going to Vrindavan. But Nityananda Prabhu, he understood that the devotees in Navadvipa, especially Sachi Mata, how they must be dying. And that was exactly what happened. While Lord Chaitanya was dancing, the morning that Lord Chaitanya left, all the devotees, every morning, they would come to bow down to Lord Chaitanya and be with him before they started the day. And on this day, they arrived, and they just saw something they had never seen before. Srimati Sachi Devi was standing outside the door of Lord Chaitanya's house, like a statue without moving. The only motion was incessant tears pouring from her eyes. Shivas Thakur and others, they approached her, they bowed down, they took dust from her feet. Where is, where is our Lord Gorang? Where is Gorang? Sachi Devi could not say a word. They gathered around her. And finally she said, that whatever is the property of the Lord belongs to his devotees. You are all his devotees. This house and everything in it belongs to you. You can take it all. I have nothing else to live for. Goranga has left. When she said that, everyone fell unconscious. 
And they gathered in a circle around Sachi Devi, chanting the holy names and crying, trying to pacify her, even though it was impossible for them to be pacified. Who can they take shelter of now? Nityananda Prabhu, he had gone with Lord Chaitanya for the sannyas ceremony. They approached Adwaitacharya. that they were all about to give up their lives. What did Sri Adwaita Prabhu say? I'm not going to try to stop you. I'm going to do it with you. And they all went to Mother Ganga to end their lives. And then a voice reverberated declaring that Lord Chaitanya will be with you in some days. Be patient. And Advaita Charya told everyone. And this was the only thing they could live for, the promise that the Lord would return. Lord Chaitanya was in such an ecstasy of Sri Radha's love for Krishna. He was eagerly, ecstatically in separation going to Brindavan. But Nityananda Prabhu understood the heart of the heart of the Lord, that his gravest desire was to please his devotees. Nityananda said to some simple cowherd boys with their cows, when this Swami asks you, where is the Jamuna? You show him the way to the Ganga. And they did it. And then he sent Chandrasekhar, Lord Chaitanya's maternal uncle. You go to Adwaita Bhavan and tell Adwaita Charya that he should come to the bathing gut in the Ganga with dry clothes for Lord Chaitanya. He will be coming. And then he said, after that, go to Navadweep and tell Sachi Mata to come to Adwaita Bhavan in Shantipur and all the devotees of Navadweep. Lord Chaitanya will meet you there. That beautiful story unfolds, and Adwaitacharya is there. Lord Chaitanya bathes. He's offering beautiful prayers to Mother Yamuna as the, the daughter, the goddess of love, who, has a, who, who eternally flows as in, in the spiritual world of Goloka who is the bestower of ecstatic love for Krishna, who has appeared as the daughter of the sun god. He's offering prayers to her, and he's bathing. And he comes out of the water, and Adwaita Chari is there with a boat. Here are some dry clothes. He said, what are you doing in Vrindavan? How did you know I was at Yamuna? Adwaita Chari said, this is Ganga. Lord. Chaitanya is Nityananda Prabhu. <laughs> Advaita Chaitanya is, and actually it is the Yamuna because after Prayad, the western side of the river is the Yamuna and the eastern side is Ganga because they come together and you're bathing on western side, so you have, it's like that. Now come home because I know that for three days you have not eaten anything. You've just been dancing in ecstasy through the forests and the fields. Come to my house. My, my good wife, um, Sita Thakurani, has prepared a wonderful feast for you. Lord Chaitanya said, I will just have some steamed vegetables. And he brought him back to Advaita Bhavan and Shant Shantipur, and they had wonderful feast. 
and then they had kirtan. The devotees carried Sachi Devi by palanquin. When she arrived at Adoita's house, her Nimai, who was now Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he did his dandavats and bowed to his mother's feet. Sachi Mata lifted him up and put Lord Chaitanya on her lap. She gazed upon his face. How it broke her heart. His beautiful hair was cut. It shaved head. His beautiful robes were replaced with saffron robes. She cried bitterly while she was so happy to be in his presence again. Sachimata, after hearing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's words, he said, actually, I was a madman when I took sannyas. My body belongs to you. I will do whatever you tell me to do or be wherever you want me to be. At that time, so many devotees were inviting Lord Chaitanya to take prasad that they had prepared for him. And Sachi Devi made a request. She said, all of you devotees, you may see Lord the Lord from, you may see my son from time to time, but I may never see him again. Give me this one benediction. As long as he's here, I could cook all the meals for him. And the devotees very happily celebrated the fulfillment of Sachi Devi's wish. She would cook, others would assist her. Throughout the day, they would have Hari Kata. Throughout the night, they had Harinam Sankirtan. And this went on day after day after day. Sachi Mata expressed to the devotees and expressed to Lord Chaitanya that the same Krishna that lives in Vrindavan is living in Puri in the form of Jagannath. Who is Sachimata? Previously to taking sannyas, Lord Chaitanya was trying to pacify Sachi Devi, his mother. And he said, we can never be separated. I may be leaving home, but please know we can never be separated because you are eternally my mother and I am eternally your child. Your name was Prishni and I was Prishnigarb. You are my mother Aditi and I came as Vamanadev. You are Devahuti and I am Kapila. You are Kosalia, and I am Lord Ramchandra. You are Anasuya, I am Dathatraya. You are Devaki, Yashoda, and I am Krishna. Please know my mother. We are eternally connected as mother and child. We can never be separated. So here is the mother of the absolute truth, Yashoda and Devaki, 
who has descended to this world and at the most crucial moment of her life, she is declaring that the same Krishna that is eternally living in Vrindavan is living in Jagannath Puri as Lord Jagannath. Can we ask for a greater authority? Who knows the Lord better than his own mother, who he surrendered his life to? Sachi Mata said, I want you to stay home with me. And you're willing to do it. But people will criticize you, because now you're a sannyasi and everything. And that will break my heart. I only want your happiness. I want nothing for myself, only your happiness. But if you live with Lord Krishna as Jagannath in Puri, then not only can I send you prasad and receive narrations of your pastimes, but your devotees who you love more than your life, they could come to visit you regularly because Navadweep and Jagannath Puri are like two rooms in the same house. Make your residence in Puri. Even though Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so eager, longing, yearning on his way to Vrindavan, in reciprocation with his mother's motherly love, he became equally eager and anxious to be with Lord Jagannath in Puri and make this his home. After this wonderful festival, Lord Chaitanya told his devotees, all of you return to your homes, chant the holy names of Krishna, hear about Krishna, talk about Krishna, worship Krishna, make Krishna your, work, your life and so always remember Krishna. Now return to your homes. I will go to Jagannath. The devotee said to him, this is not a time you could go. There is very great difficulty. It is too dangerous. The pathway in the direction to Puri through Bengal, there are various kings and countries that are at war. You will be captured. You may be imprisoned. You may be killed. Nobody could go at this time. So just be patient. Stay here at Adoita Bhavan. We'll have kirtan for more time. And when things get safer, then you go to Puri. They said this out of love for the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, very grave. He said, how can there ever be a situation where there is not obstacles? I will go to Puri now. Now this was a dangerous situation. When Adoitacharya saw the Lord's conviction he folded his palms and bowed down and said, my Lord, all obstacles are your servants. If it pleases you, then go to Puri to see Lord Jagannath. Now this principle is very important for us in coming to Puri. Because when we come to Puri, it's not just a matter of physically having our bodies here. 
That is a wonderful benediction. But the greatest benediction of having our bodies is here is while our bodies have, are here for our minds and our hearts to absorb ourselves in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and surrendering our hearts to taking shelter of the mercy of the Lord. Now, how many obstacles are there? From what I was told, there's over 10,000 people in the audience today. So being in this very remote place, when a remote place is really overpopulated and overcrowded, that's a difficulty. It could be an obstacle to our comforts. What to speak of me talking over time. And you may have to wait in line for Prasad. The kitchen. It's quite unimaginable how many obstacles there were to set up a cook kitchen to cook for over 10,000 people three meals a day for eight days. Setting up such a kitchen. And it's not that they're just cooking kitchery. <laughs> um, like today they had these preparations from Thailand. I went, <laughs> I went into the kitchen this morning just to offer my dandavat pranams to all the cooks and all the choppers, and they make like tens and they make, I think, 30 or 40,000 japatis every day. And they were making rice, and they were making dal, and they were making sabjis, and they were making sweets, and there's so many things. And I saw a little sign, because they, they're so organized what each pot was making, huge pots. I mean, pots that, you know, 10 people could simultaneously take a bath in one pot. <laughs> really, if you go there, you'll see. And not only you take a bath, we could all drown if we, if we, if we fall asleep. <laughs> But it, they were making this Thai subji or something like that. And it said, and it said, subji, it, instead of saying Thai subji, it said, ni Thai subji. <laughs> coming from Ni Thailand. <laughs> That's coming from the cooks. But anyway, so many obstacles, loading the trucks, getting the equipment, making the recipes, cooking it, cutting it, cleaning it. There's hundreds of people, but yet, I think they're the most blissful people in the whole Yatra.
ಗೌಡ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದಿ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೋ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಫೋ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೋ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ನಾನು ಐ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಬಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಬ್ಸ್ಟಕಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಸುಹೃತ ಸರ್ವಭೂತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರ ವೆಲ್ ವಿಶಿಂಗ್ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಸ್ಟಕಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಅಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೇ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಅಸ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಡೆಫಿನಿಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೇ ವಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ is my happiness going to be what i like or is my happiness going to be how i could make sacrifices for the higher principle of serving the lord's devotees now in this kitchen if they were just cooking for the deities all they would need is one little burner maybe two but having all those big pots and everything like that and bringing them in by trucks and loading and unloading and cooking and getting up early in the morning at 4 o'clock to start cooking and, or earlier it's for all the devotees mat bhakta puja pyadika Krishna says, serving my devotees gives me more pleasure than when you serve me. And when there's difficulties in the service, those, those obstacles, those difficulties help us to understand the value of what we're doing. When things are easy and cheap, we have a tendency to take it cheaply. but when there's obstacles that are beyond our control we need to surrender to a higher principle so yes there were wars and there were conflicts and there were so many dangers but lord chaitanya left and he took four devotees with adwaita chari actually assigned four devotees nityananda prabhu mukunda datta jagadananda pandit and damodar pandit to accompany the lord to puri and shri chaitanya mahaprabhu was constantly at every moment so eagerly awaiting being in puri with lord jagannath he would see people on the road here he is just outside of shantipur where is jagannath tell me the way to go to jagannath and so we're traveling should i continue yeah! okay <laughs> as they were traveling I'm sorry according to these little notes I've taken I was supposed to be at this part 2 hours ago <laughs> It's I'm just not very um coordinated Vrindavan Das Thakur describes when Lord Chaitanya left Shantipur all the devotees they had the same feeling the same experience as the gopis when Krishna took I mean when Akrura took Krishna from Vrindavan Vrindavan 
when a guru was about to take Krishna from Vrindava and the gopis, they were laying their bodies in, in front of the chariot wheels. They would rather be crushed than to have their hearts crushed in separation from Krishna. That was their feeling. And when Lord Chaitanya began his journey to Puri and told everyone, you go back home, how could they not follow his instruction? They all fell to the ground unconscious. And when they woke up, all they could do was cry. They went down the road a ways. And this is the principles Lord Chaitanya was teaching of how he approached Lord Jagannath and Puri. And we want to at least imagine the concepts which are infinitely higher than our abilities to comprehend or follow, but we're trying to follow in his footsteps. He asked them, did any of you bring any supplies or money? The devotees, the way the Lord asked that question, they, they said, how could we possibly bring anything without your permission? We have nothing. And Lord Chaitanya was so pleased. He smiled. He said, very good, you have nothing. <laughs> now we are going to Puri as beggars of mercy, completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Now, as I'm not going to ask each of you if you brought anything. <laughs> Because even I brought so much stuff, so I, <laughs> who am I to ask anybody? But the principle he's teaching, is when we're coming to see the Lord, when we're approaching the Lord, we must recognize Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. He's the proprietor of everything. Nothing is mine. There is a deep seated anarta within the heart of all conditioned souls that we want to be controllers, we want to be proprietors. We want to be enjoyers. Bhaktaram jagatapasam sarvaloka meheshwara. But real bhakti is to understand whether we are great kings administrating the entire world in politics, as did Yudhisthira, Parikshit, Ambarish. Ranti, or whether we're Babaji's or Sadhus living in a cave or a kutir or on the floor of an ashram. Whatever our situation, we're servants, we're not controllers. We are totally dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Srila Rupa Goswami teaches that an element, a necessary element of real surrender is to feel completely dependent on the mercy of Krishna. We may have our own arrangements. If, we want to, if we're in, under the concept that I'm the controller, then if things are not according to the expectations of our arrangements, we can be really frustrated. 
And if things go right, we can become really arrogant and proud. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching akinjana gocharam. When we understand we're under control of Krishna, even if it's our duty to make plans and to have resources, the mood of a servant is completely dependent upon the higher will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then our happiness is in the surrender of our intent to serve. Our happiness is no longer dependent on the circumstances or the outcome. It's dependent on Krishna. And even if we're unhappy, if we're depending on Krishna, our unhappiness is happiness. Does that make sense? It's happiness to the soul because Krishna is pleased. What is the use of happiness to the body, the mind, and the senses, and the ego if the soul is bereft? The heart. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu celebrated and he gave some analogies. He said, we are dependent on Krishna. He said, just like a very wealthy prince, he has magnificent palace, fine wardrobes, and the best of foods. And he's about to eat this opulent feast on golden plates, and somebody insults him. And he's so disturbed that he can't eat anything. Yes, a beggar is eating some nice chipped rice. But the prince cannot eat anything because his mind is disturbed. Or if he gets sick and he gets a fever, he cannot eat. So we are just dependent on the higher power of Krishna's mercy. Even a person living in the jungle Krishna can supply everything they need. And actually, that's why people went to the jungles in the days, in the olden days. It's not just because jungles are environmentally scenic places. It's not just because there's quietness and there's no humans around to disturb things. That's true. But actually, there are snakes, and there are mosquitoes. And in some places, there's wild boars, leopards, tigers, lions, <clears throat> heat, rain, cold. The idea of going to live in the forest the principle of it is we understand totally clearly that in that environment, we are totally dependent on Krishna. So many things are consciously out of our control. But I've seen people living in mansions and cities who have that same consciousness of depending on Krishna and trying our best to serve Krishna. And I've seen sadhus living in caves who really are disturbed because they're trying to control the environment of the forest around them. So it's a matter of consciousness. Akinshana Gocharam. This is a principle Lord Chaitanya taught us of how to approach Jagannath Puri.
how to approach a holy place, how to approach God, not as a controller. Yes, we may have in our service to make plans, but we, we determine our spiritual progress by how much we're depending upon Krishna's mercy and taking shelter of Krishna's mercy. Um, I'm just going to say one more thing, and then I'll continue. I don't want to go too late, because tomorrow Srila Prabhupada's disappearance day, and we should all, we should all be very happy. But he came to this one holy place in Bengal called Chatraboga. And Chatraboga, the river Ganga, it flows, according to Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, into 100 mouths. It goes into so many different streams. When Maharaj Bhagirat brought Mother Ganga to this earth planet, she was following him on his chariot. They came on their way to Ganga Sagar, to Chatraboga. And at that place where she divides into various streams, um, Lord Shiva, Gangadhar, he was feeling intense separation from Mother Ganga. So he came to Chatraboga and Lord Shiva wanted to worship Mother Ganga there, to be with her. And Mother Ganga wanted to worship Lord Shiva. Shiva was worshiping Ganga, Ganga was worshiping Shiva. And in this reciprocation of love and affection with Krishna in the center, Lord Shiva touched the water of the Ganges and in ecstasy, he melted into water and mixed with Ganga. So at that place, Shiva and Ganga, both in the form of water, are having this beautiful, loving relationship of, of, of master, servant, and for each other. Very holy place. The place where Lord Shiva enters into Mother Ganga is called Ambulinga. How can a place be more holy than that? You are about to hear. It was there that Lord Chaitanya bathed in the water. So now it is a purified holy place of being Ganga, Mahadev, and Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya, in his great happiness, he came out of the water and was dancing, dancing, and dancing. And it's described as he was chanting the holy names of the Lord, he was crying so many tears. The streams were more than the hundred mouths of the Ganga that were there. Mahaprabhu was crying and crying. Why was he crying? He was crying out, where is Jagannath? How do I reach Jagannath? And his devotees were around him and the people of the, of the, of the town around him, they were all chanting the holy names of the Lord. While this is happening, 
the governor of the province. He was a very saintly person that is described in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. He was very much enjoying material pleasures because he was so wealthy and so powerful. In those days, a governor was like a local king. They had great property. His name was Ramachandra Khan. He was being carried in a beautiful decorated palaquin by servants. He saw Lord Chaitanya dancing on the riverbank of Mother Ganga, crying for Lord Jagannath. He came off his palaquin and watched. And in his heart, he was thinking, I have never, ever seen anyone crying so much like this. This is beyond a human being's capacity to cry. He seems to be in such sorrow of separation. How can I help this person? What can I do for him? Lord Chaitanya was performing kirtan and Ramchandra Khan was just completely moved in a mood of what can I do to relieve the sorrow of this man? And after some time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became a little patient. And he, he saw Ramchandra Khan offering his pranams. And Lord Chaitanya said to him, Who are you? Ramchandra Khan, from his heart of hearts, he said, I am the servant of your servants. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gazed upon him because he saw this man's devotion. Then some of the local people, they said, actually, he's the governor. He's the ruler of this entire southern province of India. And when Lord Chaitanya heard this from them, the only thing he said was, Can you tell me the fastest way to reach Lord Jagannath? <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya was crying in separation from Lord Jagannath. He's crying. He's yearning. He's traveling hundreds of miles. And we're all sitting here. How much can we calculate our good fortune? He said, I will bring you to Jagannath. He said, but now is not a good time. <laughs> he said, actually, I'm in control of all the armies and all the soldiers and military of this whole region. But even with my armies, I can't go into these other countries that you have to go. They're at war. They have, they have put, and put razor sharp tridents under the ground so that if anybody steps on it, they die. Now we put mines 
what, what people do in militaries now. But in those days, they would put tridents, which actually had the same effect. If you step on it, it just goes right through your body. He said, they're everywhere. You can't walk. And not only that, but there are so many thieves and rogues because everyone's at war and there's militaries fighting each other. He said, if they find anyone, any traveler and every traveler that goes through these provinces that are ahead of you will be captured, imprisoned, tortured, or killed. You cannot do it. But since you're asking me, I'll get you to Puri. But today, come to my house so I can cook for you, and I'll arrange for you to go tonight. So Lord Chaitanya with his devotees, they went to Ramchandra Khan's house, and Ramchandra Khan personally cooked prasad for them, and Lord Chaitanya was so eager for Lord Jagannath. He didn't know where he was walking. He didn't know what he was eating. He didn't know anything. He was just totally absorbed in separation from Lord Jagannath. He ate something, and then he washed his mouth, and then he raised his arms. Oh, Jagannath, where is Jagannath? They had kirtan throughout the night. Then Ramchandra Khan, he said, the boat is secretly waiting at the ghat. We could go now. So Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Mukunda Datta, Jagadananda and Damodar Pandits, they all boarded the boat. And Ramchandra Khan gave the boatman the instructions to bring them along the river into Orissa. The boat starts moving. Lord Chaitanya orders Mukunda Dutt, chant the holy names. Muk I think you must be hungry. <laughs> Mukunda sang. Lord Chaitanya and the devotees were chanting in the Nam Sankirtan in the boat. Very happily. But the boatman was totally miserable. He was absolutely um, stricken with fear. He called out, please stop this singing. He said, we're on a secret mission. <laughs> Nobody's supposed to know we're here. We're in the middle of this river all alone at night. The forest on both banks of the river is infested with man-eating tigers. And tigers swim. <laughs> if they see a boat, they could just come to the boat and just push it down and, and eat you. He said, not only is the jungles infested with tigers all around us, but the water of, of the river here is infested with man-eating crocodiles. And they just had a little rowboat. And he said, all around here there are pirates. And any traveler who comes through this area, they will capture and kill. So please, until we get to Orissa, just be quiet. So all the devotees became completely silent. He's rowing. Lord Chaitanya 
He says, do you not see that Sudarshan Chakra is guarding this boat? Why are you afraid? We are dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Chant the holy names. This was the mood Lord Chaitanya is teaching us of how to approach Jagannath Puri. <laughs> Not by plane ticket or bus ticket or having hotel and all that. <laughs> we approach the Lord by depending on the mercy of the Lord, by taking shelter of the grace of the Lord, by our eagerness, despite all impediments, our eagerness is to serve and please the Lord and to absorb ourselves in remembering in this way, Mukunda Datta began singing. And Lord Chaitanya started dancing on the boat. And it doesn't say it, but as far as I could understand, even the boatman was singing. The whole day. <laughs> and eventually, they passed through the war zones and entered into Orissa. And in a god called Prayag in Orissa, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees came out of the came and began walking to Jagannath Puri. And after they some time they reached Remuna, the place of Madhavendra Puri. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after they performed kirtan and saw Kirchor Gopinath, he told the whole beautiful story of the life of Sripad Madhavendra Puri. And actually, it's a story of serving the Lord with great eagerness and great determination and faith with total dependence on the Lord through many difficulties. He installed Gopal on Govardhan Hill, arranged wonderful festival. Gopal wanted him to come to Jagannath Puri to get <laughs> camphor and sandalwood. That's actually, he got it here. On his way, that's where Kirchor Gopinath stole the sweet rice from him. But Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was describing how Madhavendra Puri, to please the Lord, he took that long journey by foot from Govardhan Hill to Vrindavan all the way to Ramona. And then from Ramona, he came all the way down here to Jagannath Puri, where he got sandalwood and chandan. And then he was walking through the same type of difficult, dangerous terrain as we've been talking about. But now he's carrying a great treasure house of, of sandalwood. Very dangerous, risking his life in his eagerness to serve the Lord. And how the Lord kept appearing to him and giving him more and more difficult services to perform. And after Ramona and tasting the nectarine cheer, cheer that Gopinath stole from Adarendra Puri, they went to Shakshi Gopal which is also a story of challenges. We all know the story, and I think most of you will be going there and hearing from senior devotees how that 
They went on pilgrimage by foot, and that young Brahman, how he was willing to endure so much insult and threats and everything just to protect the integrity of this older Brahman he was serving. So many obstacles. And ultimately, Gopal had to walk from Brindaban all the way to, I believe it was Andhra Pradesh, where he first went, just to protect the word of honor, the integrity of his devotees. And tomorrow, we'll continue this story and then we'll begin to describe, as far as I'm able, some of the holy places of Sri Jagannath Puri. Tomorrow is Srila Prabhupada's disappearance day. So there will be an announcement explaining exactly what the schedule will be. In today's narration, we're sharing how Lord Chaitanya taught us to approach bhakti. Expecting and knowing that so many challenges, tragedies, difficulties, dangers, heartbreaks, they will all come in our life. It is inevitable. A very neophyte type of devotee will be thinking that by serving Krishna, things will go the way I want them to go. But a sincere devotee is one who understands however things go, Krishna is my shelter. The soul is eternal. The body is destined, and everybody's body is destined to suffering and death. But we have been given the chance by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the great Acharyas, we have been given a chance through the difficulties and the happiness and the pleasures and whatever may come in this world, we have Krishna. That is why we come to Puri, to be infused with that faith, to be infused with that blessing that wherever we go, whoever we're with, we carry Krishna in the chariots of our hearts. Whether there's crocodiles, tigers, or whether there's cuckoo birds and, and loving servants or loving friends, whatever it may be, we come to Jagannath Puri to absorb ourselves, to charge ourselves with faith in the mercy of Lord Jagannath. And Srila Prabhupada, such an example that Krishna manifested through his life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was coming to Jagannath through so many obstacles. Srila Prabhupada was traveling the world to give Lord Jagannath through so many obstacles. 
Lord Chaitanya is glorifying Madhavendra Puri. He's glorifying these Brahmins connected with Shakshi Gopal. How much he glorified Srila Prabhupada. If he could have walked to America, he would have. But more difficult than walking. He took a cargo ship. Foreign land, no devotees, heart attacks, strokes. And then us. But he, he prayed to Krishna. Please give me the word, give me your words to speak to these people who are suffering in the modes of passion and ignorance. And please give them the ability to understand your words. Thank you very much.